Vampire Master of Darkness, released in 1993 for the Sega Game Gear, is probably the closest thing to a Castlevania adventure that you were going to get on the handheld. Vampire Master of Darkness is essentially a portable version of the Sega Master System game simply called Master of Darkness, of which I did a separate review back in 2012 I believe. In any case, here we go again. Vampire Master of Darkness places you in the role of failed psychologist and Ouija board enthusiast Dr. Social, who has determined through the use of his Ouija board that London killings attributed to famed killer Jack the Ripper is actually the work of famed vampire Count Dracula. And well, seeing that there are no other British blokes in silly suits brave enough to down the Count, Dr. Social takes it upon himself to do the deed, making his way through five rounds of three stages each and equipped with a variety of weapons such as knives, axes, pistols, bombs, and other assorted tools of devastation. As you fight your way past the undead minions of the night, you'll come across floating masks that will contain helpful power-ups, either in the form of weapons and sub-weapons to increase your chances of survival, or health-restoring vials, or maybe the occasional one-up. Sometimes, in true Castlevania fashion, you'll have to uncover items hidden in parts of the scenery. To say that Vampire Master of Darkness seems heavily inspired by the classic Vania style if not outright ripping it off wholesale would net you a big resounding duh. With that out of the way though, Vampire pulls off the formula to a T while adding minor bits of its own. Control pretty much functions the same way as any old school Vania game would. One attack button, one jump button, pressing up an attack will launch your sub weapon of choice, and you get to climb stairs the usual way. Climbing stairs is not always the most straightforward thing though, as you'll sometimes need to press a diagonal button while on the sweet spot to actually climb the steps, but it does work more often than not. Dr. Social is somewhat more mobile than the usual Belmont, as he could hop off stairs which makes the sense more tolerable, he could control his jump in mid-air, and he could even crawl under tight spots which is a somewhat useful ability. But even with the minor mobility advantages and the somewhat expansive arsenal of weapons you could come across, Master of Darkness does pose a challenge akin to the old school Castlevania and sometimes more so, as the challenge has more to do with memorizing the spawning locations of enemies, which may seem daunting and cheap at first, but eventually can be conquered. There is also the challenge of memorizing which masks contain which weapons and items. You could come across a mighty axe to replace your starting knife, but at times, if you're not careful, you might actually unveil and pick up another knife and find your odds steadily against you. And this is a trick often used by the game, especially during tense situations when it is preferable to have a ranged powerful weapon than the puny knife that does little damage and has no reach. That having been said, the curve in Master of Darkness is relatively smooth, starting off easy enough for you to acclimate yourself to the controls and then picking up from there. Experienced players should be able to beat this in an hour more or less. If that. For what it's worth, Master of Darkness looks pretty damn good, even with five rounds of three areas each, there's enough visual variety and gothic scenery to admire throughout the game. Characters look particularly impressive and animate well enough for what it is, never feels choppy or anything of the like, and there's some creative choices like the House of Wax Dolls or the Living Furniture. If nothing else, Master of Darkness nails the brooding atmosphere and feel that it wants to convey here. The cutscenes in the game, which advance the storyline, are fairly basic, but does its job competently enough. Sound in Vampire Master of Darkness, uh, well the sound effects are typical Master System slash Game Gear-esque sound effects that are nothing to write home about, but the music is pretty well done here with some quality tunes that actually contribute to the overall atmosphere being presented here. In particular, I like the House of Wax theme, that's a nice little piece. In all seriousness, the game's soundtrack is probably one of the better collections of music found on a Master System or Game Gear title, and I really wish some of the remixers out there would give this soundtrack a shot because there is some truly good stuff here. Overall, Vampire Master of Darkness is a fun, well-made action platformer that should appease those looking for a good action game on either the Master System or the Game Gear. This could have been considered a worthwhile substitute for the lack of any Castlevania title on the Master System or Game Gear, but even on its own merits, Vampire Master of Darkness is a solid, well-rounded package with good gameplay, good controls, superb visuals, outstanding music, and it's just loads of fun to play. If you've got a Game Gear or a Master System on hand and you dig those old school classic style of Castlevania gameplay, then Master of Darkness is one worth checking out.